Impact mapping, first of all, is just a tool, um, but it's a very important tool, and it tries to address a particular part of the software delivery process. So to put it in some context, software, modern software development and delivery involves building a product roadmap of what's going to be built, um, assessing how to take each of those items in that roadmap and feed them into a backlog that can then be processed um, by the teams as they deliver the value that is hopefully within that backlog. The problem recently has been making sure that each of those items um, has some value. Now value has a time sensitive quota to it, so something that could be very valuable to de deliver today wouldn't necessarily be valuable to deliver in 10 months time. What impact mapping tries to specifically address is do we understand why we are building this particular item of software? Whether it be a feature or whatever it be, why are we trying to achieve this goal? The reason for that is we want to deliver really valuable software and that's where I started my recent consultancy, Simplicity, is based on helping clients deliver valuable software. What does value look like for each of these items, these things we may do? And impact mapping is a great tool for collaboratively understanding the value of building a particular piece of software. To be honest, I've used this in so many settings now that any environment where change is going to happen, where you have some cause and some effect that you um, are going to instigate, impact mapping can be beneficial. It's not really contained to just software, although Goiko's beautiful, fantastic book on impact mapping that he's uh, released recently um, talks specifically about software. Really, it could be any change, uh, any potentially valuable change that it tries to look after. The most typical case, I would say product owners, uh, business analysts, um, anyone who's trying to instigate a, P a deliverable of software would find this an important technique to apply. And it's important because to those people, it extracts the assumptions that they're making about that change. So to go from cause to effect, there's usually a set of underlying assumptions that often remain hidden in a cloud of um, thou shalt build this particular feature. What impact mapping tries to do is make those ex assumptions explicit and then collaboratively, usually in small groups of people that are the stakeholders and including the team, the uh, members of the team that may deliver the software, that group then collaborate on understanding those assumptions and looking at other options that maybe drop out from that discussion. So the idea being that rather than engage on the very first solution that we come up with, um, that may be, for whatever reason, built on incorrect assumptions, you can build the solution that is the most valuable, that gets you there in the simplest way, not necessarily the easiest way. That's really the target market for impact mapping, uh, as defined by Goico and as Originally, uh, I've applied for the last uh, six, eight, seven months. The impact mapping as a technique applies to almost any change that I mean, I've had to instigate as a consultant and as a coach. So that's included examples such as looking not only at product backlog items and understanding the valuable change they may be trying to um, instigate, but also um, looking just at requirements generally, so some non-functional uh, requirements that um, I had a look at recently were around management and monitoring and change. And those requirements, when addressed or when applied to impact mapping, gave me a whole collection of different potential how to fit out to complete these things, as opposed to the original assumptions and solutions that those requirements described. So again, any situation where there is a change that is being considered. Software development is change. We are building something in order to change something. If, if no change is required, we don't build anything. Any of those situations where you are trying to instigate some change, and you have a cause, and you have effect, and you have assumptions, that's where impact mapping is useful. I've applied it in my daily life, uh, wherever I'm going to do something that may be valuable. I've applied it to building businesses. I've applied it um, to understanding the same management and monitoring constraints on an application. Really, it's for anyone who has to deal with, we are about to do something that's going to deliver some change, and we want to understand, are we doing the right uh, implementation for that change? I would suggest um, that, obviously, reading Goiko's book would be first 
Fourth Call. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful book. It's uh, just impact mapping. You can find it on Amazon. I would also suggest that impact mapping is a very simple technique. Um, the challenge with it is it's not an easy technique. So it is simple in that it maps out some very simple steps that you can pr uh, go through to try to understand what would be the most valuable solution to build for a given uh, goal. The challenge with that is that most of that process is thinking and coming up with good metrics and constraints and, got, and the devil's in the detail, which is why it's not easy. So I would always suggest that you get some exposure to some workshop or learning around it as well as the book. So I know we're going to do a, a free workshop, an introductory workshop on how to do impact mapping and in that workshop we're going to look at lots of different examples of impact mapping um, from my experience. Uh, we're going to be looking at everything from how a development team member can apply impact mapping to the sorts of decisions they make every day, right through to um, board level and how you might assess the impact of making a massive change to an organisation strategy. On top of that, um, I'm delivering a workshop with Waco at uh, QCon this year, QCon London, which is in the first week of March. And that tutorial is a one day uh, tutorial that will really dive through with myself and Goiko every aspect of how to do impact mapping and draw from all of the experience that we've both had over the last few years of building this technique. On top of that, finally, um, I guess the, uh, the somewhat advert of it is that we're going to be doing this workshop um, around the world um, over the next few months, maybe towards the end of the year as well. And I'm looking to try to take this workshop to Asia, to the US, and obviously doing it more frequently in the UK. Um, I've seen massive value in doing this workshop, not only privately but publicly. I'll be looking for interest in doing those workshops and drive, letting that interest drive where I do them and how we do them. So if anyone is interested in contacting uh, myself about running these sorts of workshops, then obviously to come through uh, the TTN to actually contact me would be uh, wonderful.